Oh shit, there's a guy up there. Will he jump down here? Ah! What? What is this? Who are you? What? Ah! So there's this boss fight in Star Wars Jedi Survivor called Spawn of Ogdo. He's an aggressive, <laughs> relentless, and downright mean giant frog. He's an optional boss. You can find him early on in the game. And while the correct choice might be to just leave him be and come back when you're stronger and more prepared for a tough fight like this, if you're stubborn like me, you're not doing anything else until you beat this guy. So if that's where you're at right now, I have good news. You can beat him no matter how weak your cal is. You just need a little patience and precision and I'm gonna show you how. So Spawn of Ogdo has an array of moves. Some of them are parryable, but most of them are not. Most of them are unblockable. And the key is learning the proper response to each one of his moves. So the thing with Ogdo is you never want to just run in and hit him. Even if he looks like he's just sitting there doing nothing. Because if you do, he'll almost always launch into one of his attacks as soon as you get there and press the attack button. Okay, I should just try to like go in for an attack with him. a proper opening. I just did, that's exactly what I just did after I said I shouldn't do it. In order to beat him, you have to focus on blocking, evading, and jumping at the right times, and only hitting him during safe windows, which are few. Greed is your enemy in this fight, so try not to hit unless you know it's safe. To start, let's talk about the best way to initiate the fight. The best way I've found is to get a drop attack on him, which does a nice chunk of damage before the fight even begins. However, Agdo spawns in a little nook of his cave where you can't reach him for a drop attack, so in order to get one, you'll have to send in a little bait to get him in position. To do this, uh, sprint towards the trap door, uh, and sprinting will automatically deflect all the blaster fire coming your way so you don't have to worry about that, and then double jump off to the side as soon as you get to the center of the trap door. This should send all the droids that were on top of it down into the pit without you, ideally. <laughs> when you see a chance, jump and hit X as soon as you see the prompt come up for your drop attack. Don't wait because if you wait, the prompt will disappear as you get closer. So jump and hit X the second you see the prompt, get your drop attack. Um, but be ready because Agdo will almost always immediately launch into an attack. So let's talk about his attacks and how you should respond to each one. His main move, or what I think of as his base attack, is this bite. This is his most common move and you can usually trigger it by running right up to his face. It's also the only move that's parryable, so you have good reason to want to trigger it. Once you get into the pit, the first thing I recommend you doing is just getting right up in his face and getting ready to parry those bites because if you get right up in his face he will do the bites. <laughs> he usually will bite twice then pause and if you're greedy you can go for a one hit here. Uh, I mean if you're greedy I can't fully endorse it though because he doesn't always pause after two bites. He's very likely to pause after two bites especially in the beginning of the fight. Um, but it's always a gamble because sometimes he'll randomly chain three, four, six, a million of these bites together instead of the usual two. So it's a very risky w safe window and I'm putting safe in quotes here because it's not safe. Um, so yeah, the unpredictable amount of bites he does during this combo means that there's no true safe window to hit him after he bites. But, but sometimes he will end his bite combo with a special red bite. The red bite is not parryable, so you'll have to dodge it by tapping the evade button. And be patient, don't evade it too early. But there is always a safe window to get a hit on him after he does his red bite. Now, whenever I tell you there's a safe window, that means a time where you can get one or two quick hits followed immediately by a backwards evade to give yourself space to respond to whatever he does next. When I say safe window, I never mean a chance to just go ham comboing him with a bunch of swipes because that window does not exist in this fight. So remember, when I mention safe windows, don't get greedy. Another one of his moves that you'll see him do early on in the fight is his squat move where he squishes himself down like a pancake and then he lunges at you. This move will probably make you frustrated, especially if you're trying to evade it, which most people do. I was at first trying to evade it and I was getting frustrated because I was like, oh, even when I feel like I'm evading it at the right time, a lot of times he still hits me. He's like a fucking homing missile. Um, but don't worry. Uh, the reason it's so frustrating when you're trying to evade it is because you're not meant to evade this one. You're supposed to jump this move, double jump this move. Once you start double jumping it, instead of trying to evade it, it becomes so much easier to avoid. 
To be safe, you can double jump over and pass him when he does it, but I recommend once you get comfortable with it, double jumping backwards, just enough to land right next to him as he lands so that you can get a hit on him after. You just have to be careful to get the timing right so you don't take damage as you land if you land too early. Although he often spins around and immediately launches into a new attack, so be ready. Get your one hit and dodge backwards right away. Uh, another attack that he does is his little jump in the air and belly flop, in a sense a little shock wave of rocks. This one is his least scary move, in my opinion, because it's easy to dodge. You can dodge it in a variety of ways. You have options, unlike some of the other moves where there is like one correct response or you're fucked. Um, and it doesn't do very much damage if it actually does hit you. So it's a very low risk move. The best way to dodge it is to double jump. But if you do accidentally hit evade or even just run backwards instead, you'll usually be okay because the radius of this attack is so small. Once you get him down to about three quarters health, you'll activate his dreaded tongue move. The tongue move is a one hit kill no matter oh, what. Really so don't get hit by it. Time. You'll know it's coming because the first time oh he does it, he'll it. suddenly leap away from you towards the center of the arena. No, he's not afraid of you. He's not running for his life. He's getting ready to fuck you up. So get ready. Once you see him turn red and start winding up the tongue, double jump to the side immediately. Don't wait. Just double jump to the side out of there. Don't evade, don't wait to evade, don't jump backwards, don't jump forwards, ah. double jump to the side as fast as you can. If you do this, he will miss, as long as there is sufficient space between the two of you. It is possible to dodge this with the well-timed evade just as his tongue comes out, but it's hard to time and I was no, able to I avoid it more easily and consistently with the early double jump instead. I'd reserve the perfectly timed evade as a backup plan if you fail to notice the signs of his tongue attack in time for the early double jump. Um, I thought that his tongue might be a weak spot, so I tried attacking I it, it while I it was it. out. Wait, Spoiler, it doesn't work. Don't try. You will die. <laughs> it's not his weak spot. Okay. Um, once you get him down to about half health, he adds two new moves to his arsenal. One is a bigger leap and belly flop. Don't be scared, this one's not so bad. The best way to dodge it is to just double jump towards him, taking care to land inside the ripple of rocks so you don't get hit by the aftershock. Landing close to him also gives you a chance to get a hit in. Uh, what makes this one easy to deal with is that the correct response to it is pretty much the same as what you should be doing when you see him do a squat attack. So if you mix up the two, it doesn't matter. The other move he starts doing in his second phase is my favorite because it's easy to dodge and it's low damage. It's his throw up move. He just starts throwing up all over the ground. This move is low damage and easy to dodge. Just evade or jump, either one and go get some damage on him. Uh, and that's all of his attacks. My final tip is don't forget to use your ranged attacks like your lightsaber throw when you have the force for it. Lightsaber throws are great to use when you see him pause between his attacks, but you know you don't have time to safely close the gap and get a regular hit on him without risking him launching into another attack just as you get there. Uh, so yeah, that can be a great way to get a little extra damage along the way. Once you've learned the correct responses and timings to each of his moves, it's just a matter of practice till you get it down. Once you get in the flow, Spana Agdo is an extremely satisfying and rewarding boss to fight. I hope this guide helped and that you're having frog legs for dinner in no time. Have fun out there and happy lightsaber swinging. Oh, and if you want to see what it looks like when you put everything together that we talked about in this video, then here is the run where I finally beat Agdo. Enjoy.
We did it! Ah! We did it! We're so good! Look at us go! Yes! That was so right. Yeah!